listening to After Sunday with Chief Servant Quentin R. Smith. Today's message is titled, The Mission Stopper. Hello and welcome to another episode of After Sunday. I am your podcast pastor, Pastor Quentin R. Smith, pastor of the Historical First Baptist Church right here in Millington, Tennessee. We pray this message will find you in a blessed situation that will cause you to look up and tell God thank you. My brothers and sisters, on last Sunday we talked about the mission stopper. The mission stopper. Satan is out to stop the mission that God has placed in your life. Whether you know it or not, all of us have a purpose in this life. We are born with a purpose. And God has given us a plan that we live our life. There's not one person on this earth that is the same. Amen. All of us are made different, but yet all of us are given a purpose in this life that we may be able to find God, honor God, and give God the glory for the life that we live. Amen. It is Satan's purpose to stop us from getting to where God want us to get to. Out of Luke, the fourth chapter, verses 1 through 13, we see a very, very, very clear passage of Jesus Christ who had just got baptized. And after he had gotten baptized, the Bible teaches and shows us that he was led into the wilderness to be tempted of the enemy. Whether you know it or not, my brothers and sisters, again, we don't recognize this world as a wilderness because it is a wilderness because this is the place where death resides. This is the place where barrenness resides. This world is not our home to the believer. We are pilgrims traveling through this here barren land. I know you have heard that before. So in this, we see, amen, how Christ himself, goes into this world, this wilderness, to be tempted of Satan, the devil. And he was tempted just like we are tempted. So when we look at Christ, we must not just look at him as God, uh, the creator of this world, but we must also look at him as man going through the same things that we've been through. Amen. We see Jesus here. 40 days without food, and now here comes the enemy. It's when we are in our weakest state that Satan comes to us to come up against us and to stop the mission that God will have us to carry forth. It's our job as believers to recognize that the mission that God has given us is to bring glory and honor to his name. And I want to say this, at whatever state that we find ourselves in, we are to bring glory and honor to God. Whether you have no money, you still ought to give him glory. Whether you're sick, you still ought to give him glory. Whatever you might be going through, you still ought to give God glory. All of us don't go through the same things. Some of us seem to have uh, 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 things in our lives that may be a little bit tougher than others, but God has put things in our life and then given us strength and power to overcome the enemy in every aspect of that life. So we must trust what God has given us, and we must believe and what God has given us. And we must honor God in every state that we are in. You remember Job. God asked Satan, Job, he said, have you considered my servant Job? And Satan comes back to God in so many words. He says that, yeah, I have considered Job, but you got a hedge around him. If you will remove the hedge, i make Job cuss you to your face. Amen. So what Satan is out to do is to stop the mission that God has given us. So we see these in the examples of Jesus Christ as he goes into the wilderness to meet Satan, the enemy 
of humankind. You need to know this. Amen. In the first temptation, Satan strikes at a human weakness, hunger. If thou be the son of God, that's what he says, amen, command these stones to be made bread. This sounds like a reasonable, amen, and human request that commands to command these stones to be made bread. And as as any man would would reply, amen, if he's hungry, and how would you feel like not eating something for 40 days, amen, and then all of a sudden, amen, the enemy come and said that you got power to turn stones into bread. How many of us would have already fainted, amen, on the third day, fourth day, or fifth day, less known 40 day, amen, talking about, amen, turning stones into bread. What Jesus here was depicting in our lives and one that we must understand is that he was trying to get Jesus to fall prey to have satisfaction without God. Hallelujah. What a great, what a great, what a great point to this here illustration is that what the enemy wants is that for you to get satisfied with the things of this world and not wait on God to be your ultimate satisfier. God should be the one that satisfies us, not bread, not appetite. We shouldn't even have an appetite for this world. We must understand that what God has brought to us, amen, is that desire must be for him and him only. We should never seek out salvation for our own. That causes us to trip up in the life of a believer. That causes us to lose track of where God would want us to go. And that causes us to look at our own wills and ways. Satan wanted to get Jesus to look at his own wills. You remember when Jesus said that the Holy Spirit was going to come in and be a comforter to us, and then the Holy Spirit will not speak of himself? Well, Jesus was the same way. When Jesus was born into the world, amen, he never spoke of himself. Lord have mercy, Everything was of his father in heaven. He tells his mom and dad, I must be about my father's business. He tells the government, he says that uh, no man taking my life. I lay it down by my own. And it's through God who is going to grant me the power to get me up. So here are the things that God puts in our play as believers and Christians, is that we must know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the satisfaction of this life can only come from knowing Jesus Christ and him crucified. I thank God for that. I thank God for all that he will ever do in the body of this faith. And Jesus comes back. He answers Satan. And this is what I also love about this passage is that if we are going to answer Satan or the enemy, we must answer him with the word of God. The only way that we can ward off Satan is belief and trust in the word of God. And that is the rhema word, the word that has the power that understands the message of the Logos, and that understands the message of the written word, which we call the Bible. We thank God for the power of the word of God in which we believe. Because if we believe in the word, we can stand on that word, we can speak that word, and we can live that word, and we can honor that word when we run into the enemies that face us in life. Amen. He talks to them 
by way of the word of God, and he tells Satan this. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Here he mastered the flesh. And until we as true believers master our flesh, don't give in to what the flesh is claiming for or going after. Please don't feed into the flesh. I know our faith is on the inside of us. I know our Christ is on the inside of us. That should be our strength that we should be holding on to. The word of God should be in us so that we live it, we speak it, and we stand up against anything that comes up against the will and way and power of our almighty God. Hallelujah. Tell the Lord thank you. So what Satan was trying to do on this first trip with the bread, he was trying to get Jesus to have be satisfied with his life without God and recognize that he had power to do whatever he needed to do. And that's the power that God wants us to not render to is not to the words of Satan, the devil, but God wants us to render to the power of his divine word. So the second temptation that Satan comes up or the enemy comes up against is to use kingdom or to use what we may call successes. See, the second temptation, Satan strikes out at the human weakness of one being successful, being their own God, having their own kingdom. Notice what he says. He said, cast thyself down from the pinnacle. Amen. And that's all Satan wants you to do. When was the last time that we hear somebody being cast down? That would be Satan the devil. You remember God cast Satan out of heaven, summons him down here to the planet Earth? Lord have mercy. In the midst of the chaotic and darkness that is going on, and then all of a sudden we see now, here is Satan coming up against God's son, telling him to cast himself down so that he can be successful and show that he is somebody. That's not the will of God. What God wants us to recognize is that success does not come by our own hands. It must come through the will and knowledge of God. Satisfaction only comes with us trusting in the word of God. Success only come in believing and honoring God, not with stuff, but with our salvation. Isn't that something? He tells the devil, amen, that God owns everything, and so to speak. He tells the devil, Satan, in other words, Satan seeks to get Christ to tempt God but God cannot be tempted with stuff. You can't push God in a corner and expect God to come out and give you what you want because you have in your own little spiritual temper tantrum. You must honor and trust God's word, and you must have faith and to believe that God will take care of you in every aspect of life. You've got to believe that. Your stuff, amen, does not make you successful. Even here in this passage of Scripture, we see, amen, Satan offering uh, uh, Christ all these kingdom and things, but Satan, amen, has the ability to give stuff. Satan has the ability to give houses. Satan has the ability to give cars. Satan has the ability to give money as long as the stuff that he gives that we do not turn around and use them for the Lord. But what we do is we, we claim success. We look at people in our world today that's got money. We, we call them successful. Successful in what? 
we tell people who've gotten all the education and all of the knowledge and, and, and they can, can go out and, and, and get all the stuff that they want, we call them successful. What good is getting a brand new car or a brand new house or having a whole lot of money and you don't use any of those things to bring glory and honor to God? What good is getting a brand new car and you don't ever drive the car to church? You don't ever drive the car to Bible study or you don't ever take anybody to church or you don't ever help anybody along the way under your Christian rim. So the thing about it is that if God is going to bless you with a car, he's going to give you that car that you may bring honor and glory to him and that you might even bring others of the faith. What good is God giving you a million-dollar home Lord, have mercy, and you spend a lifetime trying to pay for the home, and you don't ever come to church. You don't ever seek God. You don't ever pray. All you do is spend time trying to be successful to pay pay for that million-dollar home. God does not, amen, want you to honor stuff over him. I'm so blessed to hear what Jesus tells Satan in this passage of Scripture and he honors God with it, is that the things of this world, everything belongs to God. And that means that everything that we have in our life and everything that God has blessed us with should be given over to the glory of him. I don't have a million-dollar home, but the home that I have is a home where I can please, that I can honor and then I can reverence God in. I don't have a million-dollar Mercedes being, but I do have a Toyota Avalon, Lord have mercy, that God has blessed me with, and I'm going to give glory to him each and every day with it. I'm not successful because, amen, I went to school or I got a degree. I am successful because God has led me to his knowledge of knowing him in the pardon of my sins. I also recognize that I am not the sharpest knife in the draw, but I am someone that could be used of God. Stuff does not make us. It is the blessings and honor of God. The third temptation Satan goes on from uh, is a reasonable one to a questionable one. He moves from a reasonable question to a questionable one, uh, and he says, he tells Jesus to fall down and worship me. Satan, once Lucifer, never got over the defeat of trying to dethrone God and exalt himself above God. You can find those references in Isaiah 14, 12 through 17. Now he strikes at trying to mess Jesus as man up to worship me. And that's what Satan wants. Satan wants man to worship him. And it's easy for us to worship him because all we have to do is not worship God. You know that the greatest, the greatest sin that man can ever do is not love God? Because if you love God, then what happens is we love the God of our salvation, the God of this universe, the creator and maker of everything. You've got to understand that. So if we are a lover of God, we will not be a lover of Satan the devil. Because Satan comes up against God and anything that he does or have anything to do with, you must come to grips with that it is all to take us away from the knowledge of God. I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, if we're going to be able to be and do what God wants us to do as true believers, we've got to know when the enemy comes up against us, in the midst of our weaknesses, that we must honor and bless God at all times. The enemy seeks to kill, steal, and to destroy. In closing, I want to 
remind you of a young man that was in scriptures in the book of Mark in the fifth chapter of the man who was cutting himself with uh, in the tombs. Satan had came into this young man's life and his ultimate goal was to destroy this man, kill this man. But the only reason that this man could not die, he could not die because of the will of God. And God had a plan for him. This man was messed up. The Bible teaches us that he was in the tombs. Nobody in the community could contain him. Nobody in the community could constrain him. He cut himself. He had strength. Lord, have mercy. He had so much strength, so much power that the community this allowed him to stay in the tombs. They couldn't bind him. Every time they bound him, he broke. He broke their chains. He lived in the tomb, bound and banded by the spirits that was in him. The Bible teaches us that he had more than one spirit to a point that his, his name was Legion. But I want to say to you that Jesus left a revival setting, got into a boat, and traveled over to where this man was and met him on the shore. I want to say that the thing that Satan brings to us is going to have to meet Jesus one day. I want to say to you, if you are bound, if you are cast in a, a box where Satan has got and captivated your mind, I need you to know you need to meet Christ. The Bible teaches us that in this passage of Scripture that when the demons met Jesus, they had to back up because their authority over this man could not, could not stay anymore because they met the ultimate authority, and that is Jesus and his word. And Jesus told the demons, told the evil spirits to come out of him. And immediately they had to go. That's what the word of God does. Jesus is seen as the word that is made in the flesh. Jesus is seen as the written word that was spoken of in the Old Testament. And Jesus is seen as the spiritual word that we hold in our heart today. My brothers and sisters, get a hold to the knowledge of God. Understand what the true word of God is saying. And when the enemy comes against you, you know that the enemy must take flight, must leave you. In closing, I say this. This man, after Christ cast out the spirits, he was delivered from the enemy. This man was resting, sitting at Jesus' feet. This man was reversing Christ by sitting at his feet. This man was robed. He was clothed from head to toe. And he was rational. He was in his right mind. And he was ruled by the word of God. I want you to understand that as Jesus Christ gives us the great example that when we are approached by Satan the devil, the only way possible for us to get to where God wants us to be is that we must, we must Lord have mercy get in the word apply the word 
practice the word and know that the word that we have just don't work on Sunday but the word works after Sunday be blessed thank you for listening to After Sunday I hope this message encouraged you in some way and will assist you in your daily walk with God this week if you're a first time listener please subscribe to us on iTunes and Google Play or wherever you listen to podcasts at like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram if you were blessed by this podcast consider becoming a partner in support with a financial gift of a dollar or more our cash app tag is a worthy work if you would like to sponsor an episode of this podcast please email us at chiefservantslittlelambs at gmail.com for more information thank you so much for your support and join us again next week for a brand new episode have a blessed week after Sunday.